Hey guys, this is Jake from State Fun. Today we're going to swap the dually rear end out of this 62 Chevrolet C20 and put a 14 bolt underneath it. Y'all follow along. So if y'all didn't know already, this 62 Chevrolet C20 has a Cummins frame dodge frame and a cummins motor and it was originally a dually so it's got the dually rear end underneath it which means our axle sticks out a little bit too far especially when we're trying to load and unload the camper it's really close well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that rear end out weld some new brackets on a 14 bolt i had under there previously and stick it under underneath so swapping that rear end out will give us two things number one It'll convert it from the dually rear to a single rear, which means we can use our nice stock steel wheels with the dog dish caps on them instead of the uh, the dually steelies that don't really look all that good. And then number two, it'll let us actually have a taller, I think it's called, gear ratio. It's going from a 410 to a 373, which means each gear is going to have a little bit more speed to it before we... A little bit more range to it before we have to swap gears so it'll give us a little bit more drivability and a little bit better top speed which means might be able to take it on the interstate just kidding we can take it on the interstate now but it'll be a little bit more comfortable on the interstate because we won't be running high rpms running down the road at 70 mile an hour so we'll get this thing jacked up stabilized and we'll get to ripping things out let's go So we've got both of the rear ends out. We've got the dually rear end there, 14 volts sitting here. And the plan is we're gonna take this dually rear end and we'll jack up the front of the pumpkin there until these leaf spring pads are level. That's gonna be how I determine where the leaf springs sit on the axle tube in relation to the yoke. Then we'll take those measurements, transfer them over to the 14 bolt. We'll jack the 14 bolt front yoke up to get the angle just right. And uh, we'll measure out the distances between the leaf spring pads on the dually. We'll transfer it over here to the 14 bolt, grind off the spot to weld it to, weld it to the axle tube. That's the general synopsis of how we're gonna transfer the leaf spring pad locations to this 14 bolt. First, we're actually gonna have to grind off the mounts that are on here that were from the track bar and trailing arm. We'll get that cleaned up, then we'll get to measuring things. All right, here's one side. Well, that one got out of here quick. Hammer drop. Whew. Now I got those off. I'll grind off all the stuff that hung on to the axle tube after I take a break. We're gonna prop this thing up, make it level, measure it out. All of it here says that it's level. Got a couple blocks underneath the front. Got my perches level. And now it's time to measure some stuff. So I got to thinking, measuring probably isn't the best way to go about this because the distance from the yoke to the center of the axle tubes is two inches longer on this rear end than it is on the 14 bolt and the axle tubes are higher off the ground and we're dealing with gravel which is uneven in different spots so really the best way to figure out the positioning of this would be to find the angle between level and what this drive line is sitting at so i'm going to get a level make sure i've got it where i need it and then use this t-bevel to kind of measure the angle honestly there's not much angle to this thing very slight angle. Let's see if we can replicate that angle over here. I think we got the angle down. I'm gonna measure the distance between the spring perches. The spring perches. Okay. And as a quick double check, I'm gonna measure where the leaf springs are underneath the truck because I don't have a pumpkin in my way then. Measuring the leaf springs, I got 43 and 3 eighths. So that's pretty close with the 43. Now I just gotta transfer that number to these spring perches here. Probably gonna end up buying new brake lines just to be safe. I'm actually gonna do it a little differently. I'm gonna measure backing plate piece to backing plate piece, 53 and a half, and the perches are 43 and 3 eighths center of each one. 
53 and a half minus 43 and 3 eighths is 10 and an eighth. Divided by two is five and a sixteenth. So about five inches from the backing plate on either side to the center of this bolt piece should get me where it needs to be. And then I'll double check it with the measurement across. But I think this is gonna be a more accurate way of measuring it. And that's insane. I'm actually right at five inches from the backing plate here. That one looks pretty good. Man, that was a good guess. There we go, right at five inches there. Okay, now we'll do a measurement straight down let's see <laughs> looks like 43 and 3 eighths right there and i am proud of that all right so with that placement i'm gonna get a marker and i'm gonna mark that spot on the axle tube make sure we get this leveled get my marker in place there probably mark as far along the axle tube as i can because i'm about to grind all that off and if i grind my marker off then how am I gonna know where it goes all right i'm gonna use this black sharpie on this black axle tube and expect it to work just fine yeah because i'm totally gonna be able to tell what that looks like Let's get this thing leveled. Good right there. Okay. So I'm pretty sure that's where it's going to be. We're going to clean the axle tube up right there. Clean the perches up. Then we'll get them placed back and make sure they're in the right spots again. Tack weld it. Measure it again just to be safe. Check our angles again. Make sure it's all good. And then we'll probably finish it welded after that. There we go. That's why we double check things. Yep, we'll check our measurements. Right at five. That's right at five. Middle, middle, 43 and 3 Okay, that is where it needs to be. That's pretty good there. Oh, this one's already level, look at that. We're gonna go ahead and tack weld it, measure everything again, just to be safe. And then, uh, then we'll finish weld them on. Well, we got it welded up now. I ain't going nowhere. Time to stick it back under the truck. We got the rear end set on there, strapped two straps to it so it can keep it rotated and centered, hopefully. It's not too bad location-wise. Here's the bracket. Here's where it needs to mount to. Let me get the U-bolts cleaned up. Then we'll see if we can lift this thing up, get it mounted to the leaf springs. This should line up nicely once it gets rotated. I may actually go ahead and try and put uh, my bracket piece. Give Jack a couple pumps. Let me try and get some more rotation on it. All right, that's a start. That side's at least not gonna fall down. Can we get this U-bolt here in? Got that one threaded on pretty good. See, because this side actually needs to move forward some. So if I let the jack down, it should kind of swing that way and level itself out based off of where the U-bolts are sitting. There we go. So that's all of the U-bolts on, which means I'm gonna let the jack down slowly. And it's swinging forward some. There we go. Whew. Let's see if we can get that tightened up into place now. I guess I could rotate it manually flat there now. All right, let's see what happens when I tighten this up. That's it. That looks pretty good over here. Let's see what I can do with that side. How's she looking, guys? All right, let's see what happens. It's off like an eighth or a quarter of an inch or something. Let me see if we can squeeze these leaf springs together a little bit. The racket strap. Perfect. That'll work for now. Well, yep, I need to get it longer. Not about that much. Too much. So. Well, so now that we got the rear end in place, we've obviously got to get a longer drive shaft. I need to get it off. That's a slip yoke up there at the uh, two-piece part. I'm wondering if it's gonna have enough slip to go all the way back. I doubt it, because that's a pretty good distance. But you never know unless you try. Got my hammer. Let's see what it's gonna require. Let's see if I can pull on this. Tap on that. Well now, surely that's gotta come off, right? So if at first you don't succeed, try a bigger hammer. Still doesn't appear to be moving any. I think it's moving a little bit now. 
think that might be okay. I might be able to pull it the rest of the way by tightening these nuts, or at least I can get it in place and then go from there. No! That'll let me uh, beat on a little bit more until I can get it in the right position, I think. I don't see if we still got anything gripping the drive shaft. It's close to max extension, so let's see what happens. Seems as though that U joint might be too big. Well, I think the drive shaft will work lengthwise. It's just a matter of this U joint not going to work. Let me figure out how I want to fix that. All right, for the brake line, I've got the flexible hose off of the 62, and that connects to the flexible hose over here that's attached to the rear end and as long as that connects to the hard line from the dodge we'll be in business i'm kind of afraid it won't though so i guess we'll find out okay that ain't bad oh and that is the wrong threads bang now i gotta figure out something for that all right so looking at how the hard lines run hard line down goes down goes in here and this is, from what I understand, this is like ABS system for these dodges. It goes in here, out there, and this must be a piston that can shut off pressure to the rear brakes. That's definitely a larger connector than this. So maybe if I pull this one out, it'll fit on there. I don't have the connect the electrical connection for the ABS system anyways, so actually probably gonna be a good idea to get rid of it. That way it doesn't interfere. This is what's gonna leak. Brake fluid all over me, I'm sure. Is that the right size? That is not the right size. That's still a problem. Guess I'm gonna have to find a converter from this thread type to the thread type of this tube here, or this flex hose. So two different conversion pieces so far. Went out to O'Reilly, got some uh, brand new shocks and a line nut that'll go on the end of the brake line, the hard line, that fits into this flex line here. So I cut the old hard line nut off, slip this one on there, remake the flange, and then attach it there. And that'll fix the brakes, that'll fix the shocks, and all that's really left is parking brake and drive shaft after that. All right, so what I've got up here, there's a hard line with a protective coating, like a metal protector on it. And I've got a line cutting tool here. My plan is take this uh, line cutting tool, hopefully it cuts through the protectant pretty easily. Then it'll cut through the line. And then after I've got it cut off at one point, I'll go back some and try and cut the protectant off further back. So the line will stick out, protectant will be cut off further back. Ah, oh, that protector is a spring, interesting. I'll pull the spring off a little ways and then I'll clip it with some snips and then forces of the spring will pull it back onto the line further back. Look at that. That gave me plenty of room. Like I showed you already, I got this new line nut here. We'll slip that over there. Got a line flare tool. Clamp it on to the line and you want the tip of the line to be flush with the block because it has a bit of a bit of a flare angle built into the block that'll help flare it correctly. And then you tighten down the flaring mechanism and it's just a pointed owl or something. I don't know what you would call that thing, but it's pointed. Point goes directly into the line and spreads it out to flare it into the space that it shows. My flaring is not working, it's just pushing it. Having a little bit of trouble getting the flare tool to bite down to, on that 3 16 line, no matter how tight I tighten it. So, my plan is, I got this 18 gauge stranded copper wire. I'm gonna take the stranded part, wrap it around the steel line. Maybe that'll help give it some more abrasion and compression against that line, and it makes the size a little bit bigger, so I should get even more compression onto the steel line. Let's see now. Tighten down. So that's a good sign. Flare tool into the center. Please flare. Back and back out. And cross our fingers. Holy cow, I think that might have worked. I'm gonna have to remember that if I have to do this again. I'm having trouble. Hey, we got a flare. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, guys. That's right there. That'll connect my flex line. That'll be nice and tight. 
Yeah. Yeah, buddy. The flex line will connect to the other flex line. So those two will fit together. I am gonna take this and route it back in here to where I can try and use the clip to hold it in place. Cause this flex line connector here has a clip that goes on it. And if I stick it through the hole, clip it in place, then that won't move and the hard line won't vibrate around. All right, so now that we got the hard line in place, go ahead and attach the flex tube to it. Uh, I think I may have to get a new flex diverter tube for the rear end, because I kind of let it sit out and get rusty. There we go, we got it started. All right, <clears throat> okay. All right, got my metal clip. Yeah, clip's in place. Woo-hoo! I ain't going nowhere, I hope. I'll get a new uh, flex tube that goes to the brake splitter. Those will connect like that, and that'll be the brake system. We are gonna have to replace a wheel cylinder on one side. I got uh, I got a leaking one. Uh, that shouldn't be too difficult. Let's go ahead and stick this hanger back up there. Oh yeah, that'd be nice. That's pretty good. I'll get a replacement for that uh, brake line. I got a U-joint ordered for the drive shaft. I do have the shocks, so we'll go ahead and mount those up. I have the wheel cylinder too, so we'll get started on repairing on that too. So I figured out I can actually like sit up under here. That's gonna make working on this a whole lot more comfortable. Got a new flex line piece that will replace this one here. So we'll uh, unbolt it, disconnect the hard lines from it, get the new one connected to this flex line, and then reconnect this block down here to the hard lines. Oh yeah, that's better. Mucho better <clears> oh <throat> Okay. Hold one out, new one in. All right, and reinstall hard lines. All right, there we go. Well, that concludes the brake line hookup. All we got left now is the drive shaft, which I do have a conversion U joint for now, the shocks, and a replacement wheel cylinder for one of the brake drums. Oh, and then we probably ought to figure out how to set up the park brake. Right here might actually be a good position to go ahead and get the shocks on. Got some replacement shocks, so hopefully it'll ride better. So the goal here was to try and get that bolt in the top as it was expanding uh, at the right time. And I did okay. I got one half of it in, but now I gotta try and get it all the way through. Uh, got it. Woo! I'll get these things tightened down and that'll be one shock installed. One shock installed. moving too fast. All right, now I'm gonna compress it and give it another shot. And here we go. Oh, got it. There's two shocks on there, ready to be tied down. All right, shocks installed. Drive shaft, wheel cylinder, parking brakes, wheels and tires, and we'll be done. So I got this U-joint replaced. That's a 1410 to 1350. And as you can see, it does fit the drive shaft. And I tested a little bit ago before I put it in the drive shaft, so it does fit the yoke. There it is. It slides on a little bit. I ought to throw some WD-40 on there so it'll slide on a little better. That's at least far enough in I can measure how many splines it has. Three quarters of an inch of splines left. So that means, what? I had three and a half minus three quarters. So two and three quarter inches of splines that are meshing together. That's probably enough. I'll go do some Googling and find out. I think I might actually want to put the wheels and tires on, set it down on it, take a look at it. I'll worry about this other stuff after that. There you go. I'm glad I went ahead and did that. I'm gonna get the other side on, then I'm gonna work on converting the front so I can make it look good, sit back and stare at it, and then we'll worry about brakes. Well, we just got done recording the uh, front end swap, so make sure to subscribe so that when that video comes out here in a couple weeks, you'll be uh, first to know about it. But I tell you what, you can see it up there. It looks good as just single wheel. Now I gotta get back to these brakes. And I'm on the wrong side, but the driver's side brake, I got a wheel cylinder I need to replace. And we gotta figure out how we're gonna get parking brakes 
for both wheels to go up to the parking brake cable right up under there. So we'll jack it up, start working on the rear brake over here. We got the tools, gotta get this hubcap off, get the wheel pulled off, and then uh, the axle is actually bolted to the brake drum. So I unbolt that, pull the axle out, and then I can pull the drum off and get to the wheel cylinder inside. That wasn't too bad. But you may wonder, Jake, how'd you know that that uh, brake cylinder was the problem? Well, if you look at how juicy it is inside of here, that's not normal. You ain't supposed to have brake fluid on your brake pad. They don't stop very well when you lubricate something that's supposed to have friction. The only place that brake fluid can come from is from the wheel cylinder itself, because that's where the brake fluid gets applied to. So now I gotta get this out, and uh, to do that, you would typically take the entire gambit of things off. I may do that, then again, I may not. Kinda depends on what I find out about this uh, here park brake cable too. Because there is a way to extend, you extend this spacer down to the bottom, extend it all the way out, and there's a way to be able to get this out without having to take everything off. Let's see what I can see about this park brake situation. So with that disconnected, yeah, look at that. Park brake disconnected. Maybe I won't have to take the whole brake hub off. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the line from the back side of this brake cylinder. And then there may be a bolt holding it in too, I can't remember. But I'm gonna disconnect whatever's holding it in. And then we'll see if we can fiddle with it enough to get it out. There is two bolts holding it in. All right, let's see. That wasn't too bad. I did measure the drum. This is an 11 inch brake, so I'm gonna go get the 11 inch brake wheel cylinder. I'm gonna need to do a bit, a bit more cleaning on these uh, pads too. Next, nice new brake cylinder. Let's do a comparison. Yep, they look the same. Let's see if I get this sucker back in. There it is, wheel cylinder back in. Now I just gotta figure out how to do the park brake. It's got this bolt on piece here. Obviously that sticks into the drum. This bolts to the back side of it. And it's just a clip on the other end, so. I wonder if we could replicate that somehow. Now that we got this wheel cylinder reinstalled, I need to readjust the adjuster back down so that I can fit the brake drum on. And then I'll have to adjust on it a little bit, make sure that I get it the right distance for the size of the brake drum. What it's for is you adjust it to the proper distance to where the pads are close to the drum, but not scraping it constantly. Because if it's too close together, too far away from the drum, then the wheel cylinder has to work extra hard to get brakes applied. And if it's too close to the drum, then it's just constantly rubbing and building heat and it'll probably wear out some parts. We'll get everything put back together. And luckily there's a access hole on the back side of this backing plate. We can stick a screwdriver in there and adjust on it a little bit. So we're gonna start out by readjusting it inward from where we adjusted it outward before so that I can get the drum back on. That's adjusted down pretty well. I think that's far enough to get the drum on. All right, let's see if this thing fits on there, okay? A little bit of drag there. Ugh. Get a little bigger. Sounds pretty good right there. There's just a touch of drag. That'll probably go away when I get the bearings and stuff on. Or tighten down. I got my washer. Axle nut number one. That actually sounds pretty good on the brakes. Probably gonna leave it right there for right now. I am gonna end up pulling this back off when we figure out what kind of park brake to put in there. So I can adjust on it a little bit then if I need to. We'll put our locker in and then our second axle nut. That'll probably be good enough for this go around. We'll, uh, we'll figure out how torqued these are supposed to be and then kind of guesstimate it next time. But again, since I am removing this later for the parking brake cable, not worried about that right now. Well, let's get the axle back in. First part is lining up that hole in the back side. Then once it gets to this point, all you gotta do is turn it until it fits into the splines, realize your bolt holes don't line up, and go, man, I gotta turn the whole axle? No, you can just turn the drum. That'll be fine, at least for this go around. I will end up putting some new RTV seal on it when I put it together for the final time. All right, let's get the tire back on so I can set it back down. Well, it looks all right. Let's make it look better. At least the real brakes should work now. All I got left is to bleed them. Well, I got a brand new brake cable. 
This is actually for a Dodge rear end. We're gonna have to see if we can figure out how to mate it to the 14 bolt backing plate. Now the one I've got is apparently uh, 82 and prior where they used a different style uh, connector going into the parking brake area. So it's got this little clamp on style, bolts through the backing plate and on the typical e-brake cables, it's got a plate that looks very similar to this on the other side built into the cable. Those clamp together right there against this backing plate and that's what holds it in place. Well, the new style doesn't have that. It's got this like press in, snap fit piece of some sort. My thought is this clamp might actually go around that, uh, that round, rounded area there. If I get this rubber piece out of the way, might be able to clamp that down right up against the backing plate there. And that may be enough to work. I'd be extremely happy if it's that simple. So I think I'm gonna cut this off and then test fit it again. Then we'll take the wheel off and actually do it for real. I'm going to try and clamp that down like so. It might actually just work. It's definitely pretty strong pulling against it. We'll see how much, uh, how long of a cable I need on the inside. I guess I better pull this apart now. Let's see about connecting this thing. It's got a little protector over top of that. I don't think I'm gonna need that. I think it might actually get in the way. I'm doing a lot of this by feel, so sorry. So I'm just gonna try and set it inside of the little lip that it's got. So that'll pull, pull that in. That's a lot of spring. I may have to cut some of the spring down so that it's not trying to push the jacket back out of the hole because that is a lot of spring compression just trying to get it in place. So I'm gonna cut that spring down a little bit and then I'll put it back together again. So in the park brake lever, in the park position, put the spring all the way up against it and my connector piece, whatever these, whatever you want to call this thing, should be coming in right about here. So I'll go a couple rings back so that I have a little bit of compression on the spring. I may end up breaking my Harbor Freight tools. I don't know how that works, but I got it. I'm gonna try and crimp those down. A couple divots in the jacket. Hopefully that's okay. I think that'll be okay. Well, there it is with a little bit of compression on it. All right, well, Let's try bolting it up and see what happens. I'll go ahead and put a nut on you. All right, so that's gonna be the typical position of it, I guess, right there. I'll tighten that sucker down and that should work nicely. That's actually not bad. I'm just gonna tighten those up and we'll be good. It'll probably settle into place a little bit more when I pull the hard the e-brake and kind of get it nice and tight. That clamp provides a very solid backing piece to keep it from pulling any tighter. So when it does settle into its complete, into its final location, it's only gonna settle a little bit and I can adjust for it after it does that. That actually looks quite nice. I am pretty happy with that. Let's see what happens when I pull this thing now. <sighs> it moved a little bit, but I'm not strong enough to pull it enough to move the brakes. Now, routing of this thing, is extremely difficult on this side. I go right here to that hole and I'm done. That's routed. The other side will actually be a little bit more difficult because I got to go from that side all the way over here and into that top hole. But once I get them both there, I'll attach them to the bracketry that uh, is on the front half of the lever action. Those two hook into that one line that goes to the front and that'll be the park brake assembly complete. I may actually have cables long enough I can use the rod. That looks pretty good like that. So right now, I can spin the wheel. I'll go pull the uh, e-brake. You should see this thing move. And uh, we'll see if I can spin the wheel again. Did it move? Ugh. I think that'll work. I guess that's where we'll wrap it up. Thanks for watching. We finally got this rear end done. Make sure to look for that front end swap when, uh, when it posts. Y'all have a good one.